This is the video lecture on equity investments. In a previous lecture, we discussed debt investments. So now we're going to take a look at equity investments. Now, anytime we decide to purchase stock in another company, that actually represents an equity investment. And there are different potential ways to treat that investment in terms of the accounting. So the way I account for this and the journal entries that I record will actually depend on the circumstances. And what becomes very important in an equity investment is the amount of stock that I own in a particular company. Now one possibility is that the amount of stock that I own could represent less than 20% ownership. If that's the case, I actually have two options. I could classify this as either a trading or available for sale investment. It's also possible that my investment will represent 20 to 50 percent ownership. If that's the case, I do not have a choice. I have to account for it under significant influence. And then if I ever own more than 50 percent of the stock, I have no choice. I have to use controlling influence. So every time we have an example of an equity investment, we always want to pay very close attention to the percentage of ownership because that will actually have a big effect on the way I record my journal entries. Now this first classification is available for sale. In this situation, it is less than 20% ownership and the intention on the part of the company is to not actively trade the stock. So whenever that is their intention, we would classify this as available for sale. To see, to see how this would work in an example, we have a company that intends to invest $10,000 in 1,000 shares of Dell Common Stock. Now we need to know what percentage that represents. And they're telling us in this example, it represents less than a 20% ownership. And it also says that the company's intention is that they do not intend to trade the stock. So that means this will be an available for sale investment. So that's how I will record this. So when I record this journal entry, this entry is recorded on the day of the purchase. I have to debit long-term investment, AFS, which stands for available for sale, and then I will actually put the name of the company involved in parentheses. And by doing that, it will make things easier down the road if I ever decide to sell this investment. And that way I can go back and look at the name of the company and keep track of what companies are on what investments. So in this case, we paid $10,000. So I will debit $10,000. And then I will credit cash for 10000 to show that I've spent the money. So that is recorded on the day of the investment. Now once I own this stock, it's possible that over time the Dell company may decide to pay out some dividends. And if they do so, we will be receiving these dividends. So in this example, our company has received $500 in dividends from the Dell investment. When this happens, this is actually revenue for us. So if you'll notice the journal entry, we are debiting cash, 500, and we are crediting dividend revenue for 500. Now that's a little different than the journal entries that we did in the past for dividends. But you always have to remember, in this case, we are the one receiving the dividend. When we dealt with dividends in the past, we were actually the company who were paying the dividend. So you always have to pay very close attention to the terms of the transaction to make sure that you're recording this in the correct way. And this is the way to record it if we are receiving the dividend. Now even though we intended to keep this investment, it's always possible for us to sell it. And if a situation presents itself and it's an advantageous situation, where we could make money, then perhaps we will sell this investment. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this transaction. 
we've decided to sell the Dell investment for 11,000 cash. So that must be recorded on the day of the sale. I will debit cash for the $11,000 received. And on the credit side, I have to remove the investment from the books. Now the way to do that is to reverse the initial entry. So remember, when I first bought this investment, I debited long-term investment AFS Dell for $10,000. So since I'm selling the investment, I will do the exact opposite and credit that account for that amount to remove it from the books. And then you'll notice that I have a slight discrepancy in the journal entry. I have 11000 on the debit side, but only 10000 on the credit side. So essentially, I made an extra $1,000 by selling the investment. So that $1,000 will be a credit to gain. I have a $1,000 gain on this sale. And always, if there's ever a gain, it will always be on the credit side. Remember, losses are a debit and gains are a credit. If you remember that, it will be very helpful whenever you deal with investments. Now, it's also possible to classify an investment as trading. And this means that our intention is actually to aggressively trade the stock. In fact, under this classification, that would be our goal. At the first available opportunity to make money, we would go ahead and trade this stock and try to have a gain. So in this example, it's exactly the same as the previous example. We're still investing $10,000 cash. We're still investing in Dell Company. It represents less than 20% ownership, but this time it's a different intention. This time it says the company does intend to trade the stock. So we will have to change this somewhat. And what is going to change about it is the initial debit title. It's not a long-term investment, but rather a short-term investment. Because remember, with trading, I want to sell it as soon as possible. And then instead of putting AFS, I actually put trading. So it's a short-term investment trading Dell stock 10,000. So it actually changes the way I do the journal entry because it's a different intention on the part of the company. Now this journal entry is actually not affected. So if we did receive the $500 in dividends from Dell, we would actually record it the same way once again, a debit to cash and a credit to dividend revenue. So that journal entry is not actually affected by the fact that it's a different classification. Now if we did decide to sell the investment, again, the sale would have to be recorded. But once again, the journal entry is not really affected. The only difference is I use my title of short-term investment trading rather than long-term investment available for sale. So it's a slight difference simply because it's a different classification of investment. Now, once I have talked about the recording of the purchase, the dividends, and the sale, something else that I have to take a look at potentially is a market adjustment. Now, market adjustments these are going to be required for any equity investments in the available for sale and trading categories. This requirement is a gap requirement and this must be done at the end of every year. Now, I only do this for the investments that I still own at the end of the year. And when I record this adjustment, I'm showing any potential gains or losses. So to see an example, this first example, suppose that we have previously invested $10,000 in Apple stock. As of December 31st, end of the year, the value is now $12,000. So since it's the end of the year, and since I still own this investment, I've never sold it, I'm required to record a market adjustment. Now in this case, the good news is, this is a good adjustment. I paid $10,000 for the investment, 
But lucky for me, the value has increased over the year. And now it's worth more than what I originally paid. In fact, it's worth $2,000 more. So I will record a $2,000 adjustment. I will debit fair value adjustment, and I will credit unrealized gain. Now, when you see this credit to unrealized gain, what I want you to know about this is it is unrealized. Think about it. I have not actually sold this investment. So it's not until I actually sell it that I have an actual gain. What I'm doing with this journal entry is just showing the hypothetical. I'm showing that as of right now, if I sold it, we would gain 2000 So that's why we have to put unrealized gain to show that this is just an adjustment rather than an actual sale.